Johnny, can I get off this roller coaster? I'm getting kind of motion sick. Uh, man, what a weekend with the Halos, a messy bullpen, a lot of offense, two great starts. On today's show, we're going to share what you saw and we're going to share what you didn't see. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Johnny, can you can you pass me the Dramamine? I'm, I'm really, yes. I'm, not, I'm not doing well. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We are available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by the Ultimate Baseball GM. If you've ever dreamed about being a GM and managing your own baseball franchise, then this game is for you. You can download the game at ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up in the App Store, and our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when they use the promo code Locked On, all caps, in the game. Happy Monday to you, and thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the number one daily Los Angeles Angels podcast and the Super Halo Bros here with you. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. We've been fans of this team for years, and we yes, know we our Halos inside and out. And man, what a weekend it was against the Blue Jays. We're going to talk about that on today's show. Recap each game for you in each segment, including the things that you did see, the things that you didn't see. Hey, it right. is our second season here with you at Lockdown Angels, so we're very happy to be here with you and coming yes, up are. on friday it's always fan mail friday so get your questions in for fan mail friday we'd love to hear from you you can send them in all week long and if you're interested you could also leave us a voicemail we did all voicemails last friday 714-409-6396 mike that's enough of the uh the rundown here why don't we get in to recapping this weekend mike all right, let's start with the home opener on Friday. Vladdy Daddy throwing out the first pitch. Oh, so What good. a good moment that was. My my favorite number 27. My first favorite number 27. I was say, oh. And uh, then Mike Trout came along. And now I have uh, a, a 1A and a 1A. <laughs> because they're both incredible. Uh, Angels lost this game, Johnny, 4-3. to three. They combined for just three hits, including Trout's 441-foot yeah. home run. He crushed it. Somebody said if the paint can was still out there, remember the paint can? Yes, he might have landed dollars? It. I think it would have gone in it. I think Mike he would have. Mike Trout hates Toyota because he won so many. <laughs> yes. He won so many Chevy Corvettes from the All Star Game, being the MVP those two years. That uh, he's a Chevy guy, apparently. Now, if he made it in there, does the money go to him or does it go to a charity? <laughs> I don't think he needs the money. But yeah. here's the issue, John Trout and Otani, three for eight. The rest of the team, oh. For 22. Sure. I get that. I get that. But the guys walked. There were about eight walks up and down the, the lineup. And Mike, they had the lead. So to me, doesn't matter who's hitting. Doesn't matter if the rest of the team went 0 for 22. You got to hold the lead. And the biggest blow came in the seventh inning when Matt Moore was pitching. It was a repeat incident yes. of what happened against the Mariners Almost a few days prior. Almost exactly what happened before it got repeated by Phil Nevin again. Yeah. So Matt Moore pitching gives up a single and then gets the next two outs. He got removed after the second out. Jimmy Herget comes in and Phil Nevin says he likes the matchup between Jimmy Herget and Bo Bichette righty on righty. Well, one mistake pitch Mike, and it's yep. a three run difference yep. because Bo Bichette hits a three run home run. Jimmy Herget said wrong pitch, wrong time. Unfortunately, we lost the game because of it. Gooby said that he was trying to get that curveball more away from Bichette. He actually left it up inside closer to Bichette, and that's how he got a hold of that one. It feels like a Joe Madden move to me. Oh, and for he's sure. already had so many oh, of these sure. Joe Madden moves because I thought it was great. I think it's, he used to go by Anaheim Native. I think it's the weekend XO on Twitter said Phil Nevin didn't like Matt Moore versus Bo Bichette because, you know, Bo Bichette hit a uh, home run off Matt Moore in uh, Little League. You know, 20, 20 years ago. I thought yes. that was fantastic because that's what this felt like, right? It did. This is what he said about Phil, Phil Nevin said this about pulling more for Herget. He said, looking at the matchups, more to Springer and Herget to Springer. I trust Matt, of course. Springer's got him before. He hit a homer off Matt last year. I still trust him, but Jimmy's as good right on right as anyone in the game. The Halos could be six and one at this point on yeah, Friday. Right. And after this weekend, eight and one, if it weren't for some bullpen decisions that have been made. So, Here's my question, Mike. Bullpen problem, 
management problem, specifically in regard to Friday. How did you feel about this one? That was a management problem. That shouldn't so have too. happened, right? Yeah. He pulled him. You, you even said in, in just the recap of the game on Friday, you said... It's not complicated, Phil. It's I like not. that you called him Phil. It's yeah. not complicated, Phil. And that's what it feels like. It feels like it's just so overly complicated, and it doesn't have to be. He's Puxatawney Phil because it's Groundhog Day. He keeps making the same mistakes <laughs> over and over and over again. It's Groundhog Day again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Johnny, when you think about this bullpen and you think about who's in this bullpen, I, I just I would love to see Matt Moore a whole lot more and, and let more? him actually like Kylo Ren. finish. More? Right. Let him finish an inning and, and let him be yeah. able to do what he was brought in to do instead of doing the lefty righty matchups. I, I feel like I'm just going to say it. It's going to sound cliche. It's 2023. Yeah. It's not 2003. What yeah. we did in 03 doesn't work now. And so playing the matchups and lefty righty, all of that stuff, it just doesn't seem to work now. Like there is so many new ways to approach baseball. Sure. And I feel like in this game, especially with Matt Moore, the dude knows what he's doing. It's why we signed him. It's why he's on his team. So let him finish the inning. Well, let, let me push back on that because doesn't that feel like an overly analytical move to, to play the matchups like that? Or does that feel like old school to you? Because a lot of people suspect... Is Perry Manassian running this bullpen? I mean, uh, you and I know that that Phil Nevin has bent to the will of Perry Manassian, and that's why there's some cohesion there. But man, it just thinks it just feels like everybody's overthinking these decisions, especially yeah. when Matt Moore used to be a starter. Yes. And he's got great splits against lefties and righties. There's not an issue there. Yes. So I just think you let that guy get the third out, you give a guy a clean inning. I, I'm not sure what the reasoning behind that was. So all of yeah. this spoiled a beautiful start from Patrick Sandoval. You had to feel like that was coming. Six innings pitch, one run, one walk, two Ks, 89 pitches. Mike, what are some things that we saw and some things that we may not have seen on Friday? Well, what we saw was a, a really bummer of a bullpen game. But what we didn't see, and maybe not paid attention to was in this bullpen Andrew Wance is actually as of Friday was really good he had sure. two outings four innings pitch five K's no earn run no walks no hits and so he actually solidified on Friday this bullpen and I'm going to continue to say on Friday because there was some shakiness on Sunday sure but let me just be clear I when I say 2023 versus 2003 I'm talking about like using your eyes more than you're using the metrics yeah because yeah. I think that reason you gotta let you gotta let more finish the inning that was right. the biggest complaint we had last year with Jolton Joe Madden and the reason why he's gone is because he would put this guy in and then take him out and then put this guy in and take right him out, out and like, right out of the book of Joe it did feel like it was out of the book of Joe I think I don't know why they haven't burned that book yet but they gotta get rid of that and not even not even reference like Joe needs to be him who we don't speak of. Like they, they don't need yeah. to have any of that because it wasn't successful last year and stop bringing it into this season because it's not going to be good for the Angels. That brings up another thing. Was was Perry Manassian pulling the strings for Joe Madden last year? Are we yeah. wrong about Joe considering how frustrated we were that he would pull guys and give them the hooks too early? And now we're seeing the same thing with Phil. It's like, yeah. is this a Phil Nevin decision or is Perry Manassian at hand again? And I question that because it didn't seem like Phil was doing this last season right after Joe was gone. So right. that was a question that did come up was we saw it with Joe and Perry and now we're seeing it with Phil and Perry, but Phil Nevin had Phil Nevin was a different guy last season and he's yeah. not been that guy this season. I think it's 10 games in at this point, it was, you know, seven games just overcomplicating things when they don't need to be Absolutely. complicated. Absolutely. As long as I can continue to be mad at Joe Madden, then whatever you decide <laughs> is happening, it's, it's great. I just, I, I want to be mad at Joe Madden. That's all I want. <laughs> well, there's a lot of anger at Puxatani Phil for making the same decisions over and over again. Not, so that's, not good. Yeah, you're right. An, and that just was so was so stupid. It was like, what, you did the exact same thing a, a few games ago and you lost. Why would you do that continually in this game right. when you know that it didn't work before? At least all the fans saw that. I don't yeah, know why the guy that was paying a whole lot of money it. to manage this team didn't see that. Yeah, exactly. Hey, coming up on Lockdown Angels, we're going to tell you more of the things that you did see and didn't see from this weekend and I got to say, there's a lot on Sunday that we need to talk about. So we're going to cover that coming up. Today's show is brought to you by the Ultimate Pro Baseball GM. This game is one of the best games I've played in a long, long time. Here I am talking about how I would make all of these decisions. Now I'm playing this game and I'm failing miserably, Johnny, just so you know. But if you ever dreamt about managing your own franchise, download Pro Baseball GM today. It allows you to manage every strategic aspect of a franchise 
playing through the season, leading your franchise and fans to glory as you build a historic dynasty. In the simulation, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing through difficult personalities and injuries, navigating your franchise through free agency and all of the ups and downs of a regular season. And this comes in a very challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free, playable offline, so you can play whenever and wherever you want. And you, Locked On Angel listeners and Angel viewers, you get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use the promo code Locked On in the game store. So here's how you can download the game. Just visit probaseballgm.com. You can scan the QR code that you see on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, or you can look it up in the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. The ultimate pro baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. And today is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they're spending about $80 a month on subscription, but the actual total cost is probably closer to $200. And if you don't know how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. My, My wife and I wanted to watch the Alien series, and so we got the Stars app just to watch it. Totally forgot that the free trial came to an end and didn't use it after we got halfway through Alien 2. So that's our aliens, I should say. So that's our, that's our fault. That's on me. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions you don't want to pay for anymore. Just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place automatically categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and get alerted if anything looks suspicious or off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, the saving the average person $720 a year. That's a whole lot of money. Start tracking and saving money today. Check out rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Johnny, Saturday's game against the Blue Jays was a win for the Angels. They won 9-5, to five, but it was kind of like the epitome of the weekend, right? It started, nine off to a, five. Uh, it started off, again, on a roller coaster. Tyler Anderson started in this game, went four yeah. and two-thirds, seven hits, five earned, two walks, four Ks, three home runs. He hasn't allowed three home runs in a game since... Five twenty-one of twenty-one. Yeah, and so, I, didn't, I didn't hear people calling for Tyler Anderson's head after we won the game last night, <laughs> nine to five, or not last night, Saturday night, nine to five. Yeah, because people forgot about the bad start by then. Even after right. he had a good start from Oakland, I right. didn't see DFA Tyler Anderson. I didn't say get rid of him or anything like that because they won. Right, right. Angels trailed four nothing at one point in this game, but then they used homers from Michael Nelson Trout, who went yes, one for sir. three. Had a walk, three RBIs. Ran Hefo, ran Bifo, hit a home run, and then Renfro finally gets on the board finally. on Saturday. Three RBIs to come all the way back. And Johnny, get this: the bullpen on Saturday. I know four and a third, no runs, two hits, two walks, six Ks. Here's what I'm learning, and we've said this before: runs help this bullpen a whole bunch. Absolutely, they went from Tapera to loop for an out to Jose Quijada to, uh, was it Estevez? I think it I was Estevez. So. Yep. Shut it, it down Estevez, on Saturday yep. night. So yep. he he didn't get a save because it was a four-run lead, but he he did close it out. So you're right. The, the run support was certainly there for the bullpen. And then, Mike, here's the biggest thing. Anthony Rendon was back in the lineup. He finished yep. serving his suspension. First, I had to laugh because Friday somebody said, you saw that Gio Urshela play where he got the ball deep yeah. and what a great chucked play. it over to Jake Lamb. And somebody said, Rendon doesn't make that play. And I yep. said, actually, he does. And I found the proof. So I'm keeping the receipts. You had the receipts. I, it's funny because we talked about us against the world. Why is it us against other Angel fans? Like, right. what, do you guys like right. this team? Do you not like this team? I understand yeah. being frustrated with some of the stuff here. But we need to all take a deep breath and collect our thoughts. And remember this is 10 this is a 10 game season so far we're 10 right. games in right and all the things that people are talking about with the bullpen and Rendon and that, 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 like there's a lot of answers for what's going on here sure and sure. it's important for us to talk about it so with Rendon being back that slides Hunter Renfro down to number five yep people were calling for Renfro's head right when he wasn't hitting well and 
Same thing with Brandon Drury. So Renfro goes out, does what he does best, hits a home run. And I think it had everything to do with the fact that he wasn't batting cleanup. Mm -hmm. Rendon was back. Rendon is on base in front of Hunter Renfro. Changes the whole dynamic of the matchup one-on-one. So Rendon is back. The offense work. He took a spill over the railing into the camera well. I don't know if you saw that. That was pretty funny. So my question is, Mike, is the pressure off Renfro and Drury and those guys with Rendon back in this lineup? Absolutely. And I think we're going to talk about the game from yesterday, but the two games that Rendon is back in, they score nine and then they score 11. Rendon's success is the angel success. We've been saying it all along. And and you saw it happen. I'm going to talk one specific thing in this game, John, he had an at bat second and third. He got one guy over and the other guy in Mm -hmm. and he's hitting in the middle of this lineup and he just knows what he needs to do in that moment. It was an out. It was an RBI out. Yes. But it was, it was effective. It was positive. It was totally effective. And that's the thing that we didn't have with him not in this lineup. Yep. Renfro's not that guy. Renfro's going to hit you a high fly warning track ball, or he's going to hit it over the wall, right? Yeah. Or maybe a double down the line, right? And right. so Rendon is going to draw you a walk. Rendon's going to have a good at bat. You know, here's a spoiler alert for Sunday's game as we talk about it. He got hit in that in that oh, inning when they needed to it. come back, right? <laughs> he, he took, took it, it like, like a, a champ, champ. Yes. And, and like chucked his bat and he was just like, that was nothing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He probably wanted to grab that guy's jersey. So That's right. this is the thing. I think that he really, really benefits this lineup, John. He extends this lineup. He makes them more focused. And he adds a really important bat right in the center, right behind Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. Mike Trout comes up clutch in this game with that go-ahead three-run home run. That was, was so good. So good. And our friend Andrew from Angels Top Plays was there. He, plays was there, and he said the whole place – went absolutely insane for that home run. And then Mike Trout Good. hit the truck again. Yes. <laughs> and crushing and, it. And so that's, that's what you saw, but there's some things that you might not have seen. And first up is Matt Dice making two great decisions in the seventh inning. The first was throwing out Bo Bichette, trying to steal second. Mike, Bo Bichette can he they can't keep him off the bases man right he's, he's been a stud he's so everywhere and with these new rules it even helps him more to steal bags yeah and and, and so he threw out bobachette which was a success and then here's something that i didn't even pick up on that you did after the matt chapman double thice called a timeout for ryan tapera because he was about to get called for that pitch timer violation yes. on a three two count yes so thice interjected he, he stopped play and called timeout which is really wise of a catcher i know that yep. he's struggling at the plate and you and i were talking about is he does he have a future with this team well he's stepping up in moments that matter and that was a moment that mattered in those in that seventh inning on saturday night so he played a big part in the areas that you might not have seen and don't reflect necessarily in the stat sheet after the game so it was a big win nine to five of course offense was firing on all cylinders they they rally back the rally monkey made an appearance so that was great to see on saturday night so the angels are five and three after saturday's game and coming up we're talking about sunday we got to talk about it so let's get into that in just a minute Locked on Angels is brought to you by So Rare. So Rare is a revolutionary baseball fantasy game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. And unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win incredible rewards, win or lose, You still own your cards, and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more that you win, the more that you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next-level competitions and rewards. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn today. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com slash LockedOn today to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win fantastic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to get started. Get to get started playing today. All right. Sunday's game, pure Ooh. chaos. Mike, I'm looking at the notes here from just your notes of recapping it. Yeah. It literally looks like a roller coaster the way that <laughs> it it's does. Now. Oh, absolutely. So please, please recap Sunday for us. And then I have some things about what 
you didn't see yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. So Angels led 6 nothing early. Like, they had home runs. Renfro again goes deep, and it just looks magnificent. They've got a Shohei Otani home run. And then the Jays tie it with six runs mm-hmm. in, in that inning, and it's 6-6. Six to six. And freaking Matt Chapman, John. I hate that guy. <laughs> and I say that with all sorts of a love. new swing this season, man. But he's he has like just been on the A's. He tore us up. And then he's on the J's. And, he tore, and, and if Matt, if you're listening, or fans of Matt, or family of Matt, we actually, you know, great. You're a great ball player. Or, Orange, Orange County natives destroying yeah. the Angels. Name just a better duo. Stop being good against us. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's six to six. Then the J's go up 10 to six, which then all Angel fans lost their ever loving minds on Twitter. They all then it was. Out. Then it was 10 to 10, and all of those that lost their ever-loving minds are like, yeah, that's my team. Let's go. <laughs> Woohoo!" right? And then they eventually lost the game 12 to 11. And, Johnny, I know we're going to get into the details. I, I, I don't want to come across as uh, angsty here, but here's, here's the reality. We had a chance to win this game. Yes. And everybody's saying, man, we got to get Mike, and we got to get Shohei to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Mike and Shohei need to help us. And, mm. and they both did a great job in this game. We'll share their stats in a minute. But Shohei was at the plate with a chance to win this game. Mm-hmm. I get, and you're going to talk about it, I get the bullpen blew it. I get it. But Shohei had a chance to win this game. And that is what you ask for in crazy, ridiculous games sure. like this. Yeah. And so I was thankful that he was up. It was a bummer that he, he grounded out. But if we're going to get to the playoffs... It's these games that we need the unicorn to unicorn and we need the goat to goat, right? And so we got to Shohei. We got him up. We got him there. And I'm going to take that 10 out of 10 every single time. Yeah. And he's probably going to come through nine out of 10 times. And so for us to be like, ah, man, this sucks. And you got to get Shohei to the playoffs. These are the games where we need the unicorn to unicorn and we need the goat to goat. And at this point in this game, the goat did well, Mike Trout. But Shohei didn't come through when we needed him to. Well, let me push back on that because push. in the previous bases loaded situation, Mike Trout struck out. Yes. And, and yeah. so he didn't deliver. They were fortunate to get around the lineup once more and even get to Shohei at the end of the game. But Mike, right. I think the, the Shohei is a first pitch hitter and he got that first pitch. However, I think if you consider the magnitude of the moment with two outs, Runners all over the place, and you're in this t- this uh, uh, 12 to 11 game. You're trying to come back. You've got the fastball right down the middle. Sometimes these guys will swing at the first pitch, and it's junk, and that's the end of the game. Yes. In this particular case, that fastball right down the middle probably would have been it. Yeah. I also think because it was getting to about five o'clock, those shadows were messing Terrible with there everybody. Yep. So yep. I want to give Shohei a little bit of credit there. Because sure. he usually is a first pitch hitter. He didn't go for it that time. The rest of the at bat was a bummer. Yeah. And also, you know, Mike Trout did walk with the bases loaded, but yes. in the prior bases loaded situation, uh, did not come through. That would have right. gotten Brett Phillips home and that would have right. been the end of the game, right? Yeah. So there's a whole lot to talk about here. First yeah. of all, Reed Detmers, great through five. He was great. And, and then the sixth inning happens with the grand slam to Matt Chapman. Now, I think that you can, again, Puxatani Phil, I think that you need to look at Reed Detmers, the fact that this is his second start of the season, and and he let Detmers go. Normally, I would respect letting a starter go yeah. and continue. However, at this point of the season, it's his second start. He hasn't gone deep into games quite yet. But that's neither here nor there, because even after Reed Detmers hit Vladdy Jr. on the foot with a slider, right. even after... Matt Chapman hits a grand slam. He's still out there. Yeah. And Dalton Varsho hits a bunt single to add insult to injury. And I don't know if they were just trying to get Wance to warm up faster or whatnot, but man, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even I'm sure you should have started the fifth inning, to be honest and, with you. And good on Varsho to actually be aware and, and push a bunt. I think... I think that he should have started the fifth thing. I think you mean the sixth inning, right? Like that was the inning he was yes, in because he I'm actually sorry. didn't yes. get it out. But it, it's great that he came out for that. But you're right. After he hit Vladdy in the foot, I thought, okay, it, it's probably time to get him out of there because right. he looks kind of overwhelmed. Then after the grand slam, I'm like, okay, let's bring somebody else in. And then they didn't. And then when Wance did come in there, I mean, you think about this inning, that ball that he had that was grounded to him, he just didn't look it into the glove. Because people was just were doing the thing. stupid wave in the audience and it was distracting. <laughs> 
freaking it's, fans. Come on. Some, the, look, 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 look. I know that's a, I know that's a ridiculous take, but listen, come on. This is the most intense part of the game so far. And everyone's going, woo, woo. <laughs> like do that, do that. When it's a shutout game and it's yes. seven to nothing, yes. like good grief, guys. You're not engaged in this game that has been a roller coaster? What are we doing? I popped a beach ball last year. It was the greatest moment of my life. And everyone went, why That's did you a- have to do that? And I said, because I'm watching the game, yes. stop your beach ball. That's nonsense. a fresh family tradition. We both have <laughs> popped, I think, a, one beach ball a game in the last 10 years. <laughs> Listen, the offense was alive in this yes. game. And it yes. was the second straight game. Hunter Renfro does it again. Big home run. He gets the game tying double in the ninth Shohei yep. Otani gets yep. his home run two RBIs Brandon Drury finally breaks the seal and hits a home run I think that he is finally going to come around after doing that that's it was ripping off the band-aid right yeah he needed yeah. that to happen Logan Ohapi hits the longest home run his longest home run in the majors 424 109.4 off the bat his third of the year so on the way to rookie of the year Johnny let's oh, fight yeah. for it we're gonna we're gonna fight have for to it. deal with East Coast media, Anthony Volpe should get rookie yeah. of the year. And he, Maybe he'll, he'll get seventh in the home run chase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mike, here's what you didn't see. Tell me. And and people questioned what I had to say on our post-game breakdown. And, and so this is what I want to point out. I understand that we have a blow pen. I understand that we need a high-velocity guy. We have that in Quijada, but he was used up from Saturday. It would be a great time, in my opinion, to bring up Ben Joyce. Hmm. I think that he would be great as a swing and miss guy who just throws straight gas. I think that we need that. However, for people to call out Ryan Tapera and Andrew Wentz, let me just, let me just go to baseball savant here, which is Statcast, and l- remind everybody that when Ryan Tapera was facing Bo Bichette, he let one go too early. It went above Bichette's head. Bichette put his hands above his head and got hit on the hand, hit yep. by pitch. Yep. That's not a normal hit by pitch. That's right. a guy getting out of the way. He got hit in the hand. That's questionable because isn't the hand part of the bat anyway? Right. So when is it above your head? It's not, but when it's below your head, it is. That's, yeah. Who knows? I think it's on a swing, but the next two singles from Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who may I remind you is batting, uh, I think over 400 <laughs> and Matt Chapman also batting over 400. Vladdy Jr. Hits a single. 65.9 miles per hour off the bat. Where does it fall? Between the infielders and the outfielders. Yeah. Where does Matt Chapman's 68.3 mile per hour dinky do fall? Between the infielders and the outfielders. Kevin Kiermeyer, 66.9 off the bat. Single, right? So they're just stacking up these hits yeah. over and over and over and scoring runs. I get that the bullpen needs to come in and be able to lock it down. I get that. But in this case, I have to say, that the the blow pen notion was out the window for me hmm. because I look at these dinky do hits and the bad luck these guys were getting off of the bat and I think somebody on Twitter said you know it could be solved with a hard throwing velocity guy again I agree with you the yeah. Angels need that they need another Jose Quijada somebody yeah. who can throw hard like Ben Joyce I imagine Ben Joyce will be up sooner rather than later but when it comes to this bullpen. And the way that they were dinky, dude, and and those runs were added on. That was so frustrating to everybody involved. Now, the Angels did come back. They rally. And Carlos Estevez gives up the Manfred runner and gives up another run. So yeah. again, the, blue, the bullpen blew it. I'll say that. Carlos Estevez should have been able to prevent those runs from scoring or at least only keep the Manfred run score and not give up a second one. But... The Blue Jays are a good team. They're a championship caliber team. We are two good teams with terrible bullpens because Jordan Romano, who looking at fantasy, number one, number two, number three, uh, closer on the list, blew the save, blew his first save of the year. And so we are two great teams with two bad bullpens. Something had to give. And in this case, it was the Angels who gave. Yeah. And listen, last year, this game would have been over in the seventh. One mm-hmm. more thing I want to point out that people aren't talking about enough. Gio Urshela being a stud at the bottom of the order. Yep. And getting the lineup turned over to Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, and Shohei Otani. We would have not been in a position where Mike Trout was up there with the bases loaded. We would not have been in a position where Shohei Otani 
was the final out of the game with a chance to win it. If it not were for Gio Urshela getting that lineup turned over again. So last year, if this is eight, nine hitters, seven, eight, nine hitters, that's not happening. It's right. <laughs> automatic outs. It's Andrew yep. Velasquez swinging and missing, right? Yep. So that is one more thing I wanted to point out was just the fact that seven, eight, nine doing their job at the bottom of the order, getting the lineup turned over to the guys who need to be in those positions when it matters most. So those are our thoughts. Hopefully you understand where I'm coming from with the dinky dudes. Like, like I said, I will blame the bullpen until the sun goes down. But in this case with Ryan Tapera and, and Andrew Wentz, like I, I can't help but think how unfair those, and unlucky I should say, yeah. those blue pits we're in. So I, I've said a lot. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, uh, two things. Uh, one, um, Ben Joyce, uh, Angel fans are, are not going to like him because when he comes up, he might have a bad he's game. Go, like He's he going to walk. Right? And what he did it, it, just the other day, he, he actually lost a no-hitter. Mm-hmm. They got a no-hitter, but they lost it because he walked five guys. Yeah, hit by and, pitch, and, walked and a so guy. Yeah. It's totally his fault. They scored all seven runs and lost the game in the top of the ninth. And so... DFA fans, Ben Joyce! They're DFA. not going to like him. Yeah, bring Chris Rodriguez in. He's still hurt, friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But here's the good news. We have a chance to get right against the Washington Nationals. Oh, yeah. Tonight, Patrick Corbin, Jose Suarez, two guys going to battle it out. And the, the Nats are not good. And friends, we're five and four yeah. sitting atop the AOS. The <laughs> Astros are struggling and yeah. the Mariners are struggling. And right. so if there's a time for us to still figure it out, it's right now. And I think now against a team like the Nats, we got to put some wins together. Absolutely. Yeah, it should be an easy series for these guys. I know we didn't win the series against the Blue Jays. Yeah. And in theory, we there's a, there's a world where we are 9-1 and one because yeah. of bullpen decisions. Yeah. But we need to learn from these mistakes, move forward, and hopefully we don't keep doing a Groundhog Day, Puxatani Phil. Let's figure out a new game plan for these Halos and go with that moving forward. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out the Locked On Fantasy Baseball podcast. Matt and Dom are going to help you win your fantasy baseball league. And you can find their podcast wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And they're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, be sure you give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Mike, do the usual thing where you tell us what's on deck while I look at something about Reed Detmers. Okay, so tomorrow on Locked On Angels, we're gonna we're gonna lay out the bullpen. We're gonna we're gonna tell ah. you how the bullpen should work. We're gonna okay. give our thoughts on the best strategies on how the pen should be used. John gave a bit of a spoiler. We're gonna talk about a high velo guy, maybe who we would add to this bullpen. We're gonna help Phil because we know that he listens, and we're gonna help him be successful tomorrow on Locked On Angels. They listened to the small ball segment. They did not listen to the bullpen segment from, the you know, they're, they're busy guys. And so maybe they just <laughs> listen to one episode, but they can, this is the episode you need to listen to tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Really fast. Before we go, everything Reed Detmers threw yesterday was up velocity yep. wise. 1.7 yep. on the fastball, 3.8 on the slider, 2.0 on the curve ball. He, he got, uh, let's see, 11 whiffs on his pitches during the outing. So just swing and miss stuff is there and Reed Detmers is going to be fine guys. Reed is fantastic. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Yes. He's good. All right, friends come back and join us tomorrow on lockdown angels for that bullpen discussion. And we'll be recapping game one against the nationals until then. My name is John and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us. And we will see you right back here tomorrow.